Ebola can start off very vague. You might have a headache, you might have fever, people often develop some redness in the eyes, some rashes. Ultimately, it starts to get progressively more severe. They may have abdominal pain, they may start to feel really tired, unable to even get up out of bed. Um, that's one of the signs that really uh, raises people's suspicions. Many times they have what's known as a clotting disorder, where they start to bleed because their blood is not clotting. The way that you end up knowing for sure is doing a blood test, and that's what's happening in many places right now in West Africa. The thing with Ebola is that you might see symptoms very quickly, within a day or so, or it could take up to three weeks. But we do know of people who, who were fine uh, early in the morning, and by the end of the day, they were dead. Ebola likely came from some wild animal, and after all these years, they're still not sure which, although they suspect that it came from fruit bats. Once it infects human beings, then human beings can start to spread it from person to person. And that's not transmitted through the air. It's not something you breathe in like the flu, but it is something that can be in a small amount of body fluid, and if that is uh, contaminated with the Ebola virus, that can infect other people. We know that once somebody starts to become sick, uh, any even minuscule microscopic amount of body fluid from that person could infect other people. There's just got to be a no tolerance policy with regard to that. You have stories of, of family members cleaning the, the body even, even after a loved one has died uh, and, and getting infected that way. Those types of things have to absolutely be stopped and that's part of education campaigns not only by these doctors who are going in, such as Doctors Without Borders, but also the local doctors in all these countries uh, who, who are sometimes much more trusted. As far as the rest of the world goes, they, they within airports and, and other places of travel, they probably need to implement policies where they check people's temperatures, ask them questions before they get on a plane to try and reduce the risk that someone with Ebola gets on an international flight. But that's almost impossible to make ironclad. It is likely we are going to see people with Ebola travel to all sorts of parts of the world, including the United States. That will likely happen in the world in which we live, but it's a question of making sure it doesn't continue to spread after that.